you know, September, October, is the stock market going to be bearish? They want to know, uh, curious about, you know, is there hesitation? And then the 50% cash day trading, mostly looking at, uh, they're talking about trading ETFs. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? I guess I, they know me, they know my, my opinions on these things, but do you agree with, you know, the market potentially coming down in September, October, especially the traditional equities and legacy markets. Right. So th this is the question of the hour in crypto. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so people who make fun of crypto can stop making fun of crypto after the casino that equities have become. Yeah. Right. Like I did some research on this. There's a lot of terminology, but a lot of the value in equities is coming from people buying one day call options with their rent money, right? In other words, the retail universe and the speculative froth is, you know, it's like beyond what can be described. And the article I read on this was back in June. And the net net is if the equity market stops going up every day, when they pull the rug out from underneath this thing, you know, you could be looking at a 10 to 15% drop. Now in crypto, that's like, well, whatever, that happens before my coffee, right? But in equities, it could create a huge disturbance. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, in risk management inside big hedge funds, you know, if they've got stocks, bonds, commodities, and currencies, right? And they're like four dogs in a cage, in cages, if the equity dog starts barking, their computer systems are going to tell them to de-risk because all the other markets, all the other dogs start barking as well. Mm -hmm. So again, this goes back to, wait a minute, who's selling all this? Where's this selling pressure coming from? So the biggest risk to, to crypto is, you know, tax law selling. You know, I know BitBoy didn't think so, but, you know, taxes are, are a real thing. And then there's this idea how that spills over to equities, right? I mean, if you've been hodling equities, okay, you've been almost like laughing all the way as this thing goes parabolic as the economy tanks. So your incentive to take your money is enormous. Pay the 14% capital gains tax, buy some property in Idaho and some MREs, and wow, this has been great. Maybe I'll take up <laughs> crypto. So that's how I would answer that question. That's a good answer. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, so Warren Buffett recently said how he thinks the market's going to crash. He sold his airlines, he sold banks, and he bought gold mines. Yep. And uh, so he sees the same thing happen. And he's buying, I mean, pretty much the closest thing to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. After saying for years and years and years with Charlie Munger that gold is terrible. And yep. so I think they all see it coming and it's all coming down the line because I, th I think a lot of the, the stock market is just propped up with the free money. That, I mean, all the money printing that they did where we're at right now, it's not really, it hasn't recovered. It's just the, the deficit this one year alone is the same $4 trillion is the same as the deficit from 1776 up until 1990, 220 years of the US deficit. We just did that in one year. I mean, that's something that's massively going to impact the stock market. And uh, so I think that being in cryptocurrency, we're going to be able to weather the storm because we're in a brand new asset class that right now is such a drop in the bucket, but it's, a, I would think a secure drop in the bucket as opposed to what's gonna happen to everything else. Agree. Right. Everyone's Absolutely. like, oh my God, 9 billion in DeFi. It's a bubble. People, the Fed printed 2.6 trillion in March. 9 yeah. billion in DeFi is a bubble? <laughs> We're like a safe haven compared to the amounts that are out there, as you said. Yeah. Absolutely. And here's the thing that people aren't realizing, and a lot of people don't talk about. They talk about, well, there's going to be inflation, in US dollar. I'm like, yeah, but who's really going to feel it first? The US or every other country that doesn't have a ton of capital that has problems or uses the US dollar or, you know, like Cambodia or, you know, countries that don't have very, like very strong economies. 
I find that, that when people ask me, why Bitcoin? I said, because it will come out of necessity. It's not going to come the way we expected it to. I believe that because of all these, all these money printers going, you know, it's eventually going to cause other countries to, to go, you know, up, belly up. And the U.S. is still going to be there and they're still going to be okay. Because Australia, my friends work in the banks, they don't want Australian dollars. They want U.S. dollars. Everyone wants U.S. dollars. So it's almost like there's always going to be fine if you have U.S. dollars. But what about all these other countries? What are they going to do? You're already seeing it in several countries, Turkey, across Africa, in, in Venezuela, in Argentina, Brazil. They're all starting to grow massively for crypto. And why? Because it's safer than hiding a pile of cash this big underneath your pillow or something. And it's worth enough to buy like what, a meals for a week? <laughs> it, it, it's pretty, it's, it's something that a lot of people don't talk about. So yeah, the U S you know, are printing tons of money, but I don't think it's going to affect them the same way as it's going to affect a lot of the other countries, which I think for crypto will have a very positive effect. All right. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff, everybody.